Hello and welcome to the channel. President Tinubu recently spoke in France on going off his inauguration speech teleprompter to declare that subsidy is gone, meaning it was not advised by those advising him because they know that as a democracy, it was an undemocratic thing to do. What followed? <laughs> well, those of us in the country knows, but However they want to spin it now, even some public analysts or even critics, was that the right course of action? Subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you. Fuel subsidy removal. What courage really possessed Tinubu? The right economic policy under the wrong political conditions or process will lack credibility and efficacy. In policy making, there is a distinction between substance and process. Substance is what to do, that is, the nuts and bolts of a policy. Process is how to do it. Both must work in sync, otherwise there is a risk of failure. Tinubu went into his inauguration on May 29 with no intention to scrap the fuel subsidy from day one. Rather, his prepared speech referred to phasing out the subsidy in line with his manifesto, Renewed Hope 2023, which says on page 37, we shall phase out the fuel subsidy. But during his inauguration speech, Tinubu blotted out, the fuel subsidy is gone. During his recent trip to France, Tinubu told the Nigerian community in Paris what transpired. He said he did not discuss the automatic removal of the fuel subsidy with his aides before the inauguration and did not include it in a speech. Then he said, when I got to the podium, I was possessed with courage and I said, subsidy is gone. Really? What kind of courage possessed Tinubu to behave like an autocrat? In a democracy, the cause cannot simply excuse the leader and justify the means. How could he suddenly be possessed with courage to announce a policy with far-reaching consequences for ordinary citizens without adequate consultation, preparation, and remedial measures? Such capriciousness is associated with dictatorships. Let me repeat what I have said many times. Even if the Supreme Court validates Tinubu's election, his administration is a minority government. He has the weakest mandate of any president since 1999 even ignoring the credibility deficit of that mandate. The overwhelming majority of the electorate, 63.39%, did not vote for Tinubu. If he governs with arrogance, he will, sooner or later, find that mere constitutional technicalities are different from legitimacy and a strong mandate. The mandate hypothesis says that the government has greater scope for big bank reforms if it won a strong mandate for change in an election. Surely, running a minority government with a weak mandate, Tinubu must govern with humility and build genuine consultation and national consensus around critical reforms. Ideally, he should form a broad-based national unity government. Unfortunately, he is pursuing a Machiavellian divide-and-rule strategy with he and some weak case fringe group whose dubious contributions to his victory did not take his vote beyond the disputed 8.8 .8 million out of 23.4 million valid votes. But there is another damaging political contest. Recently, former President Muhammad Buhari said he amended the Petroleum Industry Act 2021 to delay the fuel subsidy removal to allow Tinubu to win the election. Buhari said that if he had withdrawn the fuel subsidy, the social consequences would have lost Tinubu the election. Polls after polls show that the party would have been thrown out of office if the decision as envisaged by the new Petroleum Industry Act was made, he said. So, Buhari manipulated the law and policy on fuel subsidy removal to allow Tinubu to win the election. But once Tinubu won, he was possessed with courage and spontaneously scrapped the subsidy, ignoring the social consequences that Buhari said would have cost him victory. Essentially, if Buhari must be believed, Tinubu won the election on a deception. That makes the whimsical arbitrariness of his autocratic decision to remove the fuel subsidy even more politically unacceptable. What about the crass hypocrisy? 
in a book, Fighting Corruption is Dangerous, Dr. Ngozi Okonje Wiela, former Minister of Finance and current Director General of the WTO, describes the visceral opposition to President Goodluck Jonathan's plan to phase out the oil subsidies in 2012. The opposition was led by Tinubu's then party, Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN. In a recent article titled, Fiel Subsidy and the God of Jonathan, Dr. Ruben Abati, then President Jonathan's spokesperson, also described the extent of the opposition and referenced an article written by Tinubu in 2012 titled, Removal of Oil Subsidy. President Jonathan breaks social contracts with the people. The Nation, January 11, 2012. Yet now that Tinubu is in power and needs money for his administration, he is consumed by latter-day zeal to tackle the fuel subsidy. Such dishonesty, hypocrisy, and opportunism undermine the credibility of policies, even the right economic policies. But how far can Tinubu go? The fuel subsidy fraud became endemic under the administration of President Buhari, who was the Minister of Petroleum during his two terms in office. Buhari certainly knew but did nothing about the subsidy scam. In his recent widely publicized interview on Channels TV, former Governor Isa Yuguda of Baoshi State said that a friend of his in the oil industry told him that he told the President, Mr. President, please remove this subsidy. We are tired of making money. So, continuable go beyond scrapping the fuel subsidy and probe the subsidy racket to recover money from the oil scammers. Unfortunately, he won't be possessed with such courage, for as David Pylan, African editor of the Financial Times, wrote recently, Tinubu has appeared to epitomize all that is wrong with Nigeria's governing class. Last week, Tinubu said, I could have asked for my share of the fuel subsidy, but that's not why you elected me. But if Tinubu said he wasn't elected president to benefit from the fuel subsidy, was he elected governor to benefit from the resources of Lagos State? True Alpha Beta, as widely alleged, even former President Olusegun Obasanjo couldn't help asking, why did he set up Alpha Beta? Tinubu simply lacks the credibility to be sanctimonious. But here's the question. How will Tinubu account for $10 billion annual savings from the subsidy removal? And how would he tackle the social consequences if he was possessed with courage to scrap the subsidy he must be possessed with courage to deal with its social fallout. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.